Do you need a quick, stylish idea for Christmas ornaments? Today, I'm taking some plain metal rounds I bought but didn't use last year, adding some custom SVGs and black Oracle vinyl to create simple, stunning ornaments. Grab your Cricut, and I'll walk you through adding a unique, personal touch to your tree. Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Before we head into Cricut Design Space, I wanted to show you the designs we'll be working with today. All of the individual pieces, with the exception of this adorable snowman, were found on Creative Fabrica, and I will have links to those individual pieces down below. Um, I did design the two silhouettes here, and I will have a link where you can download those as well for free. The 2024 font is Vintage Mother, and this cute little swirly thing here is from the Amistry Hand Extra font set. So let's go ahead and jump into Cricut Design Space and I'll share a few little tips and tricks for you. Now that we're in Cricut Design Space on my iPad, I did want to share a few helpful tips with you. When you first upload the snowman and the reindeer silhouettes, they are going to appear quite large on the canvas and that's okay. I design these so that you can make them any size you want. You can put them on an ornament like we're going to do today, or if you'd rather, you can resize these to put them on a wood round. So in order to resize them, choose one of them, and you'll see this one comes in at a little over seven inches. So come down to the edit tab, make sure that your height and width ratios are locked, and then you can choose however big you want to make these. So let's type in 3.25. And then we will highlight the snowman and we will do the same. So let's go ahead and jump over to the next screen. And we'll talk a little bit more about the ornaments that we're going to be making today. So I've done a little bit of work without you, but I wanted to show you this ornament here. I have all of my ornaments sized to approximately 3.38 inches, and that will fit really nicely on a three and a half inch round ornament. These gray circles and squares are my weeding boxes. So once you have your image the size you want, you'll want to go ahead and center it with your weeding box. So we will just click a line and center. And then in order to ensure that it is placed correctly on that weeding box, we need to come over to actions and we need to attach them together. So I'm going to go ahead and attach all of these ornaments with their weeding boxes and I will be right back with you. Now that the ornaments are set up, we have two options. We can either select make it and let the software auto arrange everything, or we can manually place the images ourselves. I prefer to position them manually so that there's a little extra space between each of the ornaments. Now this can get a little tricky because we have to make sure we keep this under 11 and a half by 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and arrange these and I will be right back with you. Now that everything's arranged the way I want on the mat, we need to do one more step. We need to highlight everything and then we need to click attach. This will ensure that the Cricut will place each of these sections on a different mat. So let's go ahead and click make it. We're going to be doing this on a 12 by 12 mat. And as you can see, our first mat 
has four of the round ornaments and three of the years. So now all I need to do is make sure I know how much vinyl to cut. So if I cut a piece that is nine inches tall by the full width, I'm not going to be wasting a whole lot of vinyl. And on our second mat, I need a piece that is, oh, let's say seven and a half inches tall by about eight and a half inches wide. So let's go ahead and click next. We will choose our accessory, which is my Cricut Explore Air 2. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to be using Oracle 651 permanent vinyl in black. And I am going to be able to use the premium vinyl setting. And that will be with the default pressure. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to set up my mat and run it through the Cricut. And we'll be back with, we'll be back together for the next step. Okay, so we had a little bit of a problem. Um, as you can see, these two ornaments, especially this one, did not cut well at all. Um, I don't know what is going on. I think I probably need a new blade. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and make two ornaments today after all. Um, I did go ahead and weed these out. I used my pin pen weeding tool. Love this little guy. If you don't have one, hop on over to 143 Vinyl and pick one up. You will not regret that. Um, I also had to use a little bit of painter's tape to hold my vinyl down to the Cricut mat. Um, I have cleaned this, but it's just, it's not that sticky. So as with all Cricut projects, we need to make sure to turn the mat over to peel off our paper or our vinyl. And we do that so that this won't curl too much more than it already is. Um, it's kind of not great, but, and that won't even hold it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim these out a little bit and then I will get rid of the extra vinyl that we don't need. And then I should be able to salvage a little bit of this so I will tuck that away for later. And I'm just going to get rid of the rest of this that we don't need. All right so Moving on, um, I have some medium tack transfer tape, also from 143 Vinyl, and this works beautifully for me. So I'm going to take a piece and I'm going to trim it down just a little bit. And I'm gonna do that before I put it on my, on my vinyl. I wish there was a way I could keep that flat, but we're just going to go for it and hope for the best. So I always hold my transfer tape in kind of a U shape or the, I guess they call it the taco method. And I'm just going to put that down in the middle and then go over it like that. And then the most important thing to do is to make sure you burnish this well so that it picks up the transfer tape. And you wanna do that on both sides. No, you want to burnish it well so that the transfer tape picks up your vinyl. That's the way it is. All right, so I have that piece ready. And then I will take this little piece and 
I think I'm just going to use this whole thing for the 2024. So again, I will taco shape it and then I will burnish it on the front and back. And then I will set that aside for just a moment. And I'm going to bring in my first ornament. Now I am going to take this string off. I'll go ahead and cut that off of both of them and get that out of the way. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure these are very clean. So I have some isopropyl alcohol and I have my soft rag. Um, this may look dirty, but it's not. I washed it recently. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this off. Need some more alcohol. And I'll kind of clean my fingers off as well. So I will get the back and the front. And then I'll tuck these away. Now I'm going to work on the 2024 first. Um, it's smaller, so if it happens to scratch, um, it won't be quite as noticeable as all of the black vinyl on there. So I will give it one last burnish. And you always want to take the back, the backing paper of the vinyl off of the transfer tape rather than the other way around. So we will get a little corner started and then we will carefully pull it back. And the easiest way to do this so that we can line everything up as straight as we want is with a piece of parchment paper. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my parchment paper over my ornament like this. And I will stick that down for a moment. And this way, I'll be able to attach a little portion of my transfer tape to the ornament without attaching my vinyl. So this will give me the opportunity to center it and get it as straight as I want before the actual vinyl adheres to the ornament. So we have that down. And this is our hinge. So then we can pull this up, take our parchment paper out, and then lay it down. And then, of course, we want to burnish it really well with smaller pieces. I like to go in with my fingers and make sure it is all adhered. And then again, we will carefully go from the corner, peeling it up, checking each piece as we go. If something does start lifting, then all we need to do is push it back down. So we'll tuck that away for just a moment. And there is the back side of our ornament. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on the front. So the first thing we'll do is one last burnish. And then I will take the backing paper off of the transfer tape. And then I will line up my parchment paper. And I'm doing my best to get the whole uh, straight up and down. Um, again, like with my card projects, if it's not perfect. You know what? It's me. Nothing is ever perfect. 
All right, so this one is going to be a little bit trickier because the image is a lot larger than the other one. So we just have to be a little more cautious with it and try and line it up at the top more so than at the bottom. And if it takes you a little while, it takes you a little while so that you get it the way you want it. So if it takes too long, I'll just speed right through this portion. Okay, so I have this lined up. I do not yet have it pressed down here at the bottom. Um, I want to make sure everything is lined up the way I want it first. And that I can see about an even amount of space around the entire ornament. And then I will just go ahead and press that bottom down. And then I will lift this up. Remove my parchment. And in this case, I'm just going to walk it down with my fingers. Okay. And there we go. So we will burnish this down, run our fingers over it to make sure everything is applied. And I'm sorry I don't have my other light turned on. Um, I use the uh, same outlet on my Cricut that I use for that light. But when I tried turning it on, it just, it kind of blurred everything out for me and I couldn't see. So let's go ahead and slowly peel this back at an angle. And I really want to be cautious about the tree. And see, there's a little piece of the limb that is poking up. So I will push that back down. And there's another limb coming up. Now, when I used this die cut last year, or this SVG file last year, I did also have the same issue. It is very delicate and a little on the stubborn side. So we will come in from another angle and see how that works for us. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to put my parchment paper over it just to make sure I can get that rubbed down without damaging it any. And there is the front of our ornament. I hope that isn't glaring too much and I hope it is in view. Um, I will definitely have close-up pictures for you on the blog at coloradolean.com. And I, th I think that's just adorable. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this second ornament and I will reuse my transfer tape. This one, the tree limb, I'm going to have problems with that. I already know that. Um, it was kind of pulling up a little bit while it was cutting. So I'm going to be very cautious about that one. And the deer's antlers are pretty delicate as well at this small size. And I will reuse the same transfer tape for the year. We'll just put that on. And I think I need to paint this thing red so I can see it. <laughs> Even with it sitting right next to me, it's 
seems to just disappear on me. All right, so again, we're going to start with the year. And I will peel that up. Get my parchment paper. Now this doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It can be however you want it. So if you want it a little bit crooked, make it a little bit crooked. If you want it perfectly straight, if you're like me, you'll probably need some kind of a ruler to help you with that. So we will lift this up. Pull out our parchment. and then pop that down. And then always pull it an angle. Okay. Now I am gonna save this small piece of transfer tape. Um, if I can find some other images that I like. And if I can figure out what the heck's going on with my Cricut blade, um, I will make some more. And you can reuse the transfer tape until you can no longer reuse it. So that's always nice. And it saves a ton of money. So again, I will place my parchment paper down and I will pull the backing paper off of the transfer, transfer tape and I'm going to line this up. Now the great thing about using the parchment paper is if in the process of putting this onto the parchment, the whole thing flips, then, you know, you can easily readjust it. And I like that placement, so I will attach that little bottom portion there. Pull it back. Remove my paper. And that one just slipped out of my hands, but it looked like it was all right. Now I definitely want to burnish around these upper limbs. And I'm going to be very, very careful when I take those off. As well as around the deer's antlers. So let's carefully peel these off. And this one is going very well. Hmm. Not an ounce of trouble. And there is our second ornament. Now I have uh, some string that I'm going to use for these ornaments. So I'm going to hop off here and I'm going to dig that out because I neglected to do that before. So I'll be right back with you. Well, I didn't have to look as hard or as long as I thought I was going to have to. Um, I found my twine 
This is by Ashland. Um, this could be from Michael's. It could be from Hobby Lobby. One of the two. And it is the same idea that came with the original ornaments. So we will just take off a length of this. And then we will just thread this through. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we can just tie a knot. Now this isn't very long, which will work on our tree this year because we have a rather small tree this year. So I don't need anything that's huge. And if you like, you can put a little bit of fray check on this so it won't shed too much. Or you could just leave it natural like I'm probably going to do. And in case you're wondering, these scissors are the Tim Holtz and Tonic Studio scissors. They are fantastic. They are a titanium blade, so they are non-stick. And this is the long pair at nine inches. And I use them for everything. So we'll go ahead and tie this one up. And there you go. Let's trim this one down just a little bit. And maybe this one as well. And there's our little ornaments. I am so happy with how these turned out. I'm going to get some close-up photos for you. Um, I did just notice a little air bubble in here. So I'm going to try and work that out real quick. If you can't get these air bubbles out, um, go ahead and use a little stick pin. And just put a little bitty hole in it. And then when you move the air around it, then it should flatten out just fine. All right. So there we go. I think I'm going to go ahead and look for a couple more designs. I have four more ornaments that I can make, and I really want to make all of these this year. So I will be back with you shortly with either these two ornaments as my finished project, or I may have a couple more that we can share. Well, this project didn't quite go as planned, but that's okay. When two of my original designs did not cut properly, I decided to switch things up and find some new images. I went with a Santa face and a Santa cam bundle that were both found on Creative Fabrica. As you can see, the Santa cam design cut perfectly. However, Santa's face gave me some troubles. I did try recutting it with less pressure, but then the blade didn't go all the way through the vinyl. So I'm thinking that may need to be replaced, but it's only been a year since I've had the machine. The designs that did cut turned out fantastic. This Santa Cam design is definitely my favorite, and the purple red Oracle vinyl really makes this ornament pop. As always, you'll find close up photos and better photos than I can offer here on the blog post at coloradolean.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a fantastic week, you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.